Hello, and welcome to our two-part series where we will discuss the role of plasma in the COVID-19 response. We will hear the, this from the perspective of two of our industry partners who are plasma manufacturers. So first, we begin with a conversation with Mitty Doyle, Vice President, R&D, Immunology and Neurology, and Patrick Collins, Senior Director of Healthcare Policy and External Affairs at CSL Bering. In this conversation, Mitty and Patrick will represent the collaboration of many in the role of plasma in the COVID-19 response. So Patrick, let's begin with you. Can you first describe your role and the other companies involved with this group endeavor called the COVID-19 Plasma Alliance? Absolutely, and, and first, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to present uh, today. Uh, the COVID-19 Plasma Alliance is an outgrowth of uh, conversations between Takeda and CSL Bering, uh, specifically Bill Mezzanotti, uh, who was our executive vice president for R&D, uh, and Julie Kim, who is the president of the Plasma Services Division within Takeda. In terms of what can we do as the plasma industry uh, to address this pandemic? Uh, so through those discussions, um, we uh, founded this organization along with Biotest, BPL, LFB, and Octopharma uh, to create this initiative to have one joint effort in terms of plasma collection and production of a hyperimmune, uh, which we believe might help to address the, the present situation with regard to COVID-19. Since that initial discussion, uh, additional companies have also joined the effort, uh, ADMA Biologics, Biopharma Plasma, GC Pharma, and Sanguine as well. Uh, we're also partnering with Microsoft and the Gates Foundation, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as a part of this effort as well for some of the technology aspects of the effort. So our hope and our goal overall is as a joint effort to manufacture a, a non-commercial product, an unbranded product, uh, that will not result in any profit for any of the companies, but one that we hope will address or hope to uh, partially address the COVID-19 situation. Well, that's an impressive collaboration. Um, Thank thanks, you. Patrick. And Mitty, what is the, um, the title of the study and is the intent? Can you talk about that? Certainly. So the short title of the study is simply inpatient treatment with anti-coronavirus immunoglobulin. But the official study title is an international multi-center adaptive randomized double-blind placebo controlled trial of the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of anti-coronavirus hyperimmune intravenous immunoglobulin for the treatment of adult hospitalized patients at onset of clinical progression of COVID-19. So it's a long title, but it reflects the uh, rigor of the study and also the international scope. Amazing. And we will be sharing um, a link to that. So if anybody has um, is looking for more information on that, um, it will be available. Um, thank you. And Patrick, how did the group come together? How did this happen? Uh, it was an outgrowth of the conversations between Takeda and CSL Bering uh, and the other uh, companies I mentioned earlier. Um, we're all uh, united in terms of, of providing uh, uh, therapies to, to treat an array of rare conditions, including uh, CIDP, uh, among others. But um, with this pandemic in place, we knew that plasma uh, has the ability um, uh, and has the antibodies, uh, the COVID antibodies, that we felt that as an industry, we might be able to, uh, uh, to make an impact. So in discussions with other companies, the 10 I mentioned earlier, um, decided that we could unite and do this one uh, unbranded effort that would uh, uh, eliminate a lot of the duplication. So instead of mm -hmm. having multiple clinical trials on multiple products, 
uh, instead of having multiple conversations with FDA, we could do this all as one alliance. So um, really it was a, a good well effort on all the companies to, uh, to unite for uh, a good effort to hopefully uh, address the pandemic situation. Yeah, it's a streamlined approach, right? Um, has anything ever been done like this? Any kind of collaboration? Um, uh, not to my knowledge within the plasma industry. Uh, I know the different companies uh, do collaborate in terms of um, some of the safety measures. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, log reduction for fractionation for uh, potential pathogens. So um, take... Uh, the, the variant kurtzfeldt jakob disease or mad cow disease. I know companies have been collaborating through our industry trade association, PPTA, for a number of years uh, in terms of, of um, sharing safety information. But in terms of the actual production or the pending production of a product and a joint clinical trial, uh, in the plasma space, this is the first uh, situation that I'm aware of. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, thank you. And um, Mitty, has the study um, started and, and where will it take place? Yeah, so not yet, but the uh, study is planned to start this summer, so it will be quite soon. And we are collaborating closely with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which is, of course, one of the National Institutes of Health Division. And we're also working with the INSIGHT network to operationalize this study. INSIGHT is a global network with several hundred sites across 37 countries. And we're taking advantage of the global reach in planning enrollment at this time. Currently, we know that the study will take place in the US, in Europe, and in Japan, but we're also carefully looking at additional countries such as those in South America because our goal is to enroll this study as quickly as possible and to go to sites and countries where the pandemic is most active. Impressive. And so it'll, you're hoping this to open sites this summer, and then do you have any idea how long the, the sort of collection will take to? Well, absolutely, um, we will open sites this summer, and the trial is designed to efficiently and quickly, hopefully demonstrate the efficacy and safety of this therapy for hospitalized patients with COVID-19. So we're certainly doing everything that we can to accelerate enrollment and to get an answer as quickly as possible. So although I can't give you an exact timeline for the completion of this study, it will be quite rapid because we're leveraging the strength of our collaboration and the strength of the very broad reaching insight network. Yeah, so impressive and I'm sure um, complicated to, to deploy, but uh, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna go back to you, Patrick. Um, this study is reliant on convalescent plasma. Is there an effect on source plasma or the plasma used to make um, in immune globulin that our patients use? Yeah, thank you for that question, Lisa. And, and this is an important question. Uh, in no way will the collection of, of convalescent plasma impact our uh, collection of regular source plasma. In fact, um, that is, is, is tantamount to what we do, and we are doing everything we can uh, as a company and, quite frankly, as an industry uh, to ensure that uh, donors uh, are aware and can donate plasma uh, for the production of immune globulin and the other therapies that the plasma manufacturers might make. So this is a, a, a dual effort in terms of the collection of convalescent plasma, but in no way does it replace our efforts for regular source plasma collection uh, or in any way impinge uh, upon those efforts. So we're doing both, but in no way do we want to discourage, and quite frankly, we'd like to encourage uh, the ongoing uh, commitment of donors to continue 
uh, plasma collection or plasma donation, excuse me. Yeah, that's good to hear. So would it be fair to say that the um, convalescent plasma donor is very different than the source plasma donor? Uh, yes, and, and the convalescent plasma donor is someone who has contracted COVID uh, and has recovered uh, 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 from the condition uh, where they will have a, a certain level of antibody uh, that is necessary for the collection uh, and for the eventual production uh, of a, a hyperimmune product. So um, the regular plasma donor um, uh, will not have those antibodies and will continue to donate like they would and like they did prior to mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the situation of the pandemic. Right, thanks for that clarification. Mm -hmm. And um, Mitty, how, um, how do people get involved? How do they donate if they're interested in getting involved in the project? Yeah, Lisa, thank you very much for that question because these donors are very, very precious and we really would love to be able to increase the number of people that are willing to donate their convalescent plasma to this effort. So we have set up a website that is listed below on this link. You can also find the website on our YouTube video and again, we would be very, very grateful on behalf of all the patients that are very sick at this point with COVID-19 for everyone to really think about donating if it at all is possible. All right, thank you. And, and we've talked about this um, from a couple of different angles. Mitty, is there anything else that we should know about the collaboration and the study? You know, having been actively involved in this project over the past couple of months, I really want to emphasize the incredible collaboration that I've seen between companies that are normally competitors, collaboration with the NIH, with the FDA and regulatory agencies. And I think really what we're seeing is, is people at their best. You know, the, the goal of this project is all about bringing together our brightest minds. It's about sharing information and it's about leveraging our collective expertise to at least in some small way contribute to this important effort. Thank you. It's, it's so encouraging to see this work being done. So um, thank you for, for your role in that. And uh, Patrick, one more thing. We're hearing about um, this campaign called The Fight is in Us. Can you tell me about that? Uh, I, I sure can. Uh, in addition to the, the COVID-19 Plasma Alliance, uh, which is focused on uh, a hyperimmune uh, uh, product being developed, uh, The Fight is in Us is to raise awareness for uh, the greater need for plasma donation. Um, uh, as many who are watching this know that uh, there are several efforts ongoing to address the pandemic. Uh, one that has been in the news of late has been plasma transfusions. Um, so the fight is in us and the, the link is below here as well, uh, is an awareness campaign to promote the need for plasma donation, uh, for convalescent donation as well as for regular plasma donation. Uh, but uh, within the fight is in us, it's beyond just the, the members of the COVID Alliance. So Griffles, which is not part of the Alliance, is a part of the fight is in us to raise awareness for plasma donation. But as our academic institutions, uh, the Mayo Clinic is involved, uh, blood centers uh, under the umbrella of, the, uh, of America's blood centers, the American Association of Blood Banks, LabCorp, Anthem, uh, community groups such as Stop the Spread, Survivor Corps, uh, XPRIZE, uh, the Ad Council has uh, contributed their support for media support, uh, Microsoft is providing technology support, the Lasker Foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are providing advisory support. It's really a combined effort to raise the awareness for the need for plasma donation whether it's for transfusion, whether it's for a hyperimmune, whether it's for regular plasma donation for the array of therapies that are manufactured for rare diseases, such as CIDP, 
um, it is a promotional effort on the need for plasma donation. Thank you. You know, it just brings to mind that at this time of social distancing, both the fight is in us and the collaboration and research that you all are involved in, um, it's brought everyone closer. So, um, what a wonderful it, it has. It, it, it's a shame that uh, the pandemic was the, the reason for this, but um, I, I hope it illustrates that um, all of us are, are, are committed to this, whether it, it's patient organizations such as the GBS ADP Foundation, pharmaceutical companies, uh, um, the, the, the blood bank industry, um, the healthcare industry as a whole, we all have a, a part to play and really working together and collaborating united is, is really the best way to, uh, to fight this pandemic and hopefully come up with remedies, whether they be hyperimmunes, plasma transfusion, uh, vaccines, whatever the case might be. Well, um, I wanna thank you both for putting the patient first, whether it's a neurological patient that may have uh, something like CIDP or you know, those suffering with COVID-19. Um, can't thank you enough for your role in both of those. Um, so that ends my questions for today. Patrick and Mitty, thank you so much for being with us today and, and sharing this knowledge with our community. And I wanna say to our foundation family, if you have questions um, as a result of this conversation, please reach out to the foundation directly and I can get in touch with Patrick and Mitty, um, I'm sure to follow up. So thanks so much, everybody. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.